guys, it's October 4th and I've taken all the figs out of my uh, fig tree area. And I've put them all over the place because uh, we're getting a greenhouse installed. So this is step one. Hey guys, so construction has started on the greenhouse and we've got the cement base laid and a small platform in front of the door, or an apron in front of the door. And here it is, close up. So in the middle there, I'm going to leave it just dirt. Ooh, I've actually got room to put in some good um, soil, maybe um, some manure, some compost, because my hope is that when I put the trees in here, they'll be directly on ground and so that their roots can go through the grow bags and into the ground. It's uh, 10 by 20. The greenhouse, um, as big as I thought it would be, looking at it up close, it looks tiny. So we'll see once the trees actually go in here how much space we've got and if I've got room for all of them. And here it is, close up. So in the middle there, I'm going to leave it just dirt. Ooh, I've actually got room to put in some good um, soil, maybe um, some manure, some compost, because my hope is that when I put the trees in here, they'll be directly on ground and so that their roots can go through the grow bags and into the ground. It's uh, 10 by 20. The greenhouse, um, as big as I thought it would be, looking at it up close, it looks tiny. So we'll see once the trees actually go in here, how much space we've got and if I've got room for all of them. was we filled the base up with dirt so that we could uh, level off and have a uh, straight platform for all the trees to go on. It's looking good. Now we've laid down the base of the Costco greenhouse. Again, this is 10 by 20 comes wrapped in this plastic, which obviously will take off. This is where the doorway is going to go. And they actually have a piece that if you don't want to step up over that um, base, they have, uh, you could cut that out and they have a piece that you can order separately that makes it flush with the uh, flooring. Uh, I prefer the step up for now, just because I plan on putting a screen, the, the mesh screen in the doorway um, that has the magnets up onto or all around so that it just attaches by magnets um, so that I can go in and out of the greenhouse and not allow any of the bugs to come in or critters and such. So I'm thinking I would prefer to leave the step up, you know, and it'll be make it harder for mice and things like that to get in. So um, that's my preference, but just so you guys know, that's an option with the Costco greenhouse. It's coming along. I mean, it didn't look so big once they dug up the ground, but now that the base is going in and I'm able to picture it better, I think we'll have good room in there. The main hardware we, ha we got were three bags of nuts and bolts and then three bags of these, what I think are bolt covers, plastic. Um, so three and three, but I put a set down below uh, for my husband to start building the unit. Um, and these were tucked away 
in inside one of the uh, gutter pieces, which are these pieces. And so you just want to take a peek and they were tucked away right in here. Okay. Um, they won't be clearly displayed or anything. That's where we found them. And then there was another box with additional. So there are additional uh, materials dispersed in the boxes that they're required. But those were the main ones that I showed you to get the base started. And they were hard to find, so I wanted you to know. We laid down this insulation. That, that way. Um, as you can see, and this is going underneath the base to give us added, added uh, weatherproofing or insulation, or insulation, keep more warmth inside. Uh, we got two rolls of 50 yards of this stuff. And we're just going to lay the base on that. Okay, corners are in. That's cheating. So here's what we've got done so far. This is day one, and uh, it's been about, I want to say, four hours of work, four to five hours of work. It's really, really taken shape and looking beautiful. Uh, the glass is heavy duty glass, glass, not. Um, any kind of plexi or plastic or anything like that so it's quite heavy and it uh, that might take uh, quite a bit of time putting in each and every one of these panels but it's gonna be so worth it and this is the doorway as you can see it's a double door entry which is gonna be great um, for those wider trees and uh, come back and show you another step. Okay, this is day two. We've got the roof up. Wow. And the um, skylights or vents up top. Those open up automatically, by the way, when a certain temperature is reached within the greenhouse. Uh, some kind of metal contracts and those uh, open up automatically to air out the greenhouse, which is such a cool design. Just, you know, physics. Looks amazing. Let's see, is there glass? Uh, no glass. <laughs> no glass yet, but um, the roof does have glass on this side. Not on that side. Very cool, guys. All right, it's coming along, coming along. All right, we could say it's day four of fixing, of putting together the greenhouse. We're just waiting on some additional seal from the company to install the doors. Um, and we're getting ready to put up one of the shelves. It comes with two shelves that go the length of the greenhouse. Um, this one looks like it's about uh, maybe five inches or so. The other one is about a foot and we would put it across here. I just, I didn't want the foot long or a foot wide one because it would just take up too much room for nothing. I can't really see what I'm going to use it for. Um, I know I could use the smaller one, like if I'm picking figs and I want to put them somewhere and maybe cut them open for a fig video or something, right? I could use that shelf. Um, I could put my new cuttings on there, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I've got, I pulled in a couple of the fig trees that have figs on them that were out here. The Rondi is here. My uh, Sputophora dark is in here. Tuscan black is in here. 
so it should be continued. Shelf is in, it's hardly noticeable. It's got a good amount of room on it to put things on. And here's the louver window. crank and then it comes with a plexiglass for winter and in the summer I'll have to fashion some kind of netting to keep the squirrels out. We've got these attachments for the uh, sunscreen that they sent with this greenhouse. It attaches to the roof over there, they're hard to see. Yep, right there. Thank you, honey. And then, uh, so those windows open automatically with uh, this mechanism that the greenhouse came with. When it gets a certain temperature in here, it automatically expands and opens those windows. These will be manual. I think you call it a crank. Yeah, and those open manually, so. already so super warm in here just keeping the wind out um, so I'm gonna get some maybe pine bark and stabilize the floor a bit like even it out before I put the landscape fabric on it just want a nice smooth even surface and the pine bark should break down into the soil slowly and so yep it's looking great so this is the forest floor mulch I hope I've got enough fun mats down there. So this is how mulch gets delivered. all the forest floor mulch $39 per cubic yard for the um, greenhouse floor uh, <laughs> it's gonna take some time to drag out there but we're gonna do it okay here it is pretty much complete I've got the perimeter already loaded with uh, fig trees that I want around the perimeter. Mind you, they're not uh, trimmed yet as I plan to do and bring, them, bring as many of them down to a single trunk as possible. But they're full of figs, so I want those figs to ripen. It's, it is so toasty in here. Um, at night, like MJ said, they go. It goes down um, to whatever it is, pretty much outside. But I think I'm going to be able to fit them all in here. Yep. So now the only thing I have left to do is cut holes in the bottom of the um, landscape paper so that the roots can start going through. Um, which they will, and uh, that's it. We're ready. Hey, so the greenhouse is done. 
everything's been put in. All the fig trees are inside. Uh, this is my Desert King. It seems like it's so hardy um, that I'm going to take a chance and plant it outside. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it this winter or protect it this winter <clears throat> and then plant it out there uh, in the spring. But here we are. These are all the leaves that have been falling off. It is 38 degrees outside today, Fahrenheit, freezing. And just a couple of days ago, it was 70s. Um, so we've got about 70 trees in here. And they're fitting really nicely without any leaves. I don't know how much longer they'll ripen, but even now as they're ripening, the figs don't taste very good. <clears throat> I'm starting to get a real appreciation for how difficult it is growing fig trees in this zone. This is the second year for these trees. And I thought, you know, the second year is going to be great. I'm going to get a ton of figs. I did get a ton of figs, but the later ones, I'm definitely wondering if it's worth it. This is the Smith. It's a second year tree. It's huge, huge. Let me show you the size of the trunk so I can. There it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to air layer this top piece because it would make a beautiful tree just on its own. Uh, but these figs are not going to ripen after today. It's all 30s and 20s. Um, freezing cold. But I, want, I wanted to show you guys the Italian 258. The one that I pinched when it had no figs on it. It's really full of figs I love it um, and friends are telling me that now that everything's in the greenhouse we may have a chance at all of these ripening next year um, or all of its figs ripening next year not these ones these I'm probably gonna just pull off and turn into a uh, um, green fig jam but look at the size of these i258s the last the first one i picked off of it was a a week ago or so it actually i just knocked it off and it was a oh damn it excuse my language it was 81 grams um these don't look as big as it but let me grab the one that i dropped all right I'm so surprised that they don't bust open. <laughs> but two Italian 258s. How exciting is that? So I did get to taste my first. I have not had any black Madeiras. Here's the black Madeira. Uh, none of them are going to ripen. This is the Craven's Craving. I got a one or two off of it. It's full of figs, but our weather was so screwy this year that they didn't have a chance to ripen. So bummer, um, but such is the life of uh, 5B zone and growing figs. This is my white Madeira. It looks like a couple of them are, um, a few of them are swelling, like that guy and that one. And the one uh, just above it, a few of them are actually swelling, but they're not going to taste good. Oh, look at my golden rainbow. I already had about two of them off of this. This is a first year. Yeah, first year golden rainbow. Look how big it is. Look at that. So I'm going to be selling sell, uh, cuttings of that on Figbit this year. Um, so just so you know, it's super productive. If you want any 
they'll be on there. Um, but I won't post them until it goes dormant. So, <clears throat> uh, and fully lignifies if, if at all possible. Um, this is Peter's honey. Peter's honey, I got a ton off of it. Not a ton, no, I can't say that. I got, you know, maybe about 10, maybe 12, but they're all still here. And had I had just a little bit more sun, it, they would have, they would have all ripened. So again, now with the greenhouse, you know, fingers crossed, um, it seems like that's what it's going to take in zone 5B is a, some sort of greenhouse. It doesn't have to be like this, but um, I think any kind of protection from the wind um, and keeping the heat as consistent as possible. I do have a heater for it um, that will kick in and keep the temperatures during winter um, at during winter, I just want to keep it over maybe 35 degrees in here. And then in the spring, I'm going to set it so that the temperatures stay consistent even during the evenings. And so if it's, you know, uh, 40s outside, let's say, I'll keep it 40s in here probably and not go lower. And then, in, you know, as the months go on, I'll raise that temperature inside um, so that they wake up slowly but the temperature stays consistent and you know I'm thinking actually about starting it in January I think as soon as I mean <clears throat> I'm leaving them in here I'll probably put some shade up at the top because it comes with a shade cloth I'll probably keep the shade cloth out um and just let them wake up naturally however they're going to wake up and just sort of let them be my guide in terms of, you know, adjustments in temperature. Uh, this is my Silly Dolce. Look, it's swelling. I just realized that yesterday. It's swelling and it's cold, man. So if it ripens, what an awesome tree. And if it tastes good, right? This is my Exquisito got figs but and one of them ripened practically tasteless very sad negron <clears throat> loaded it just kept pumping them out these are all new stuff so the lower branches i mean i i got a a lot of figs off this and it's so delicious uh raspberry latte it's a first year it's doing awesome no figs on it though um, but I am seeing some double bumps here. So next year, fingers crossed. Uh, long doubt was awesome. This is a second year though. And I have a, I've gotten a few figs off of it. They were so good. Oh, I'm not showing it. This one's ripening. These are all swelling. Not sure. I mean, it's supposed to, I think, do well in the cold, but we shall see. This is Rondi. Rondi was a rock star. Rondi Bordeaux, rock star, as was the Atriano behind it, rock stars. Love them. But I'm going to do a lot of uh, pruning. I'm going to take, I'm going to try and keep it to a single branch. So um, I'll have a ton of cuttings if you guys want. Um, I'll put them on fig bid, but it still seems to be ripening. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> After today, I don't know. Um, Letizia was awesome. It was so delicious, but this is only the like third fig that I'm getting to ripen off of it right there. And it was rather large. Uh, Delicious, caramelly inside, very good. Um, Spotophora dark, there she is. Spotophora dark is still ripening and swelling. 
And a lot of them are aborting now that it's cold. I've got a ton inside the house, but uh, this is nothing. So I, I collected all the ones that aborted and, um, and then I'm going to just gather everything else up that's on these trees that I know is not going to make it because my fingers are frozen. It's so cold. Uh, these are all the babies. This is an Atriano. A uh, Nuestra, Senora del Carmen. That's a Sesac. Uh, the one next to it is a Capra fig. We've got a Black Celeste. Uh, and a De La Roca with a fig on it. <clears throat> that guy. What is that? Oh, that is my pastillier. These are ooh, loquat trees from California. BNR. Some air layers going for MJ. Uh, my other branch broke off, unfortunately. Um. So that's it, guys. The new greenhouse. I'm so excited. Can't wait for spring and summer next year.